welcome to today's Vlogmas. It's gonna be a story time. I'm gonna tell you about the time my doctor told me that I was malnourished. Okay, so towards the end of the summer of this year, I went to brunch with some friends of mine. Now granted, we had not, we are brunch people, <laughs> but we had not gone to brunch the entire time that we were quarantining. So this was like August, right? This was like, I think it was in the late July, early August. And we were like, okay, we've been stuck. Things are starting to open up and they have outdoor seating. It's the summertime. Let's go to brunch. So my friends and I go to Prime. It's, it's a place on South Beach, very, you know, famous for brunches and for meals and things like that. We're like, let's, you know, let's go to like a really nice place that we know we're gonna love, so we go to Prime. Uh, now, I had been self-quarantining the entire time, hadn't done very much uh, going out to do anything other than maybe go to Target every now and then, but even most of the time I'm, I'm ordering groceries and ordering supplies. So we're there. Immediately, as soon as we sit down, we order drinks. I had a martini. Uh, I will say that I worked out really hard that morning, sweat a ton, didn't have anything to eat. We met around 12.30 and then I had a martini and I hadn't had alcohol pretty much all other than like a glass of wine. Um, I had not had any alcohol the entire time that we were self-quarantining, you know, during coronavirus and all that stuff. So sat down, had a martini. You know, I could feel it. I mean, you know, I was like, oh, I haven't had alcohol in a while and I was on an empty stomach. So I knew I was feeling it a little bit. Then ended up eating, you know, and we order, I mean, <laughs> we do it big when we brunch. So we're ordering everything, short rib. Um, I think we had salmon. I think, you know, we had ordered a whole bunch of things, um, corn and dessert and bread and shrimp. And we, I mean, we were really doing it up for this brunch because we hadn't been out for a while. Um, it was almost like, you know, they let us out of a barn. And then all of a sudden uh, we were, you know, just thrilled to be out and about. So we ordered everything. Um, towards the end, like right after, so we ordered dessert because we're like, oh, we really want the dessert. We want the fried Oreos. We want, you know, all the stuff that's happening. And I worked out super hard that morning, like I said, because I wanted to eat on that day. So we <laughs> um, ordered the fried Oreos and then I started to get really, really dizzy. And I had water, so I was drinking water the entire time, um, but I was starting to get really dizzy. And I remember saying to my, to my friends, I said, I'm really dizzy and I put my, my arm on the table and then I put my head down into my arm. And then the next thing I knew, uh, my friend just goes, Tracy, are you okay? Like I, I think I blacked out, like I passed out or blacked out or something that time. And I was like, yeah, I'm just, I'm so dizzy. So I, they were like, I think you like passed out or something. And I was like, I did? Like I had no recollection of this. All I remember is that I passed out they said I was like shaking. Uh, and then, um, yeah, so I was, I blacked out, was shaking a little bit. And then I came to, she asked me if I was okay. And then I said, I'm just really dizzy. And I sat on the floor, like, but well, we were outside. So I was, it was a patio. So I sat on the, you know, the deck. Um, and I guess it had happened again. Like I had passed out again <laughs> and was doing the same things. And the next thing I knew I come to and my friends are like rubbing ice on my arms and my neck and, you know, try because they think maybe I'm overheated. We're outside. It's the summertime. This is Miami. I had a, a martini, just one martini, but I had alcohol, could have been dehydrated, whatever. So after the second time that I had, you know, passed out or whatever, I felt fine. I was like, Oh, I, I actually, I feel fine now. Like it was almost like my body needed a reset. It was like, it literally just reset to factory mode. Um, and rebooted a much, you know, a, a better me. I was no longer dizzy, like the, everything was fine. I don't know how long I blacked out, but as soon as I came to, the girls that were sitting across the way, you know, on the deck, they, they had called 911. So the paramedics came and everything. Um, paramedics came, they take my blood sugar, they check my heart rate, they check my oxygen, they check my blood pressure everything normal, like a hundred percent normal. They were like, you know, we see this all the time. It could just be heat stroke because it's really hot out today. And you had a glass of, uh, you had martini and, um, you know, with who knows what it is, but it's everything, all the vitals are normal. And I felt normal. Like after that happened, I felt normal. Uh, and so I, you know, they didn't want me to drive home obviously, because who, I didn't want to have to have a seizure, uh, pass out thing situation. Uh, when I was, driving. So my friend Heidi drove my car, uh, took me home. And then I was like, okay, well that was just weird. So I'm going to, you know, just schedule a time to meet with my doctor. Now I'd been wanting to schedule a time to meet with this doctor. Anyway, a new doctor, he's a functional medicine doctor. So they check everything. I mean, they will read you for filth. They will read your whole life uh, in front of you. 
Um, so that's what I did. So I scheduled the appointment, but it wasn't for another two weeks, which is fine. And I felt fine after that. I, I took the, so that was Saturday. I didn't work out on Sunday, worked out on Monday. Everything was fine. Hadn't had any other episodes or whatever. Um, now granted, I think it was a perfect storm for what happened. I was, uh, you know, probably a little dehydrated. I had, I had alcohol. Um, I had carb, like heavy carbs that I don't normally do. Like I eat fruit, but I don't really eat a ton of gluten and I don't eat a ton of like grain type things and definitely had gluten and grain on that day. Um, and then, you know, it was just everything that was happening, the heat, I mean, the humidity, I mean, who knows? I hadn't eaten that morning either. So um, there was that going for me. I think I, it was the, a perfect storm that I had created for myself to just black out. So when I go see the doctor, um, I get my results back from the doctor and he goes, this is really shocking. He goes, this is, this is really surprising. Um, because on a normal paper, like the, my normal vitals, aside from like slightly elevated things, like slightly elevated creatinine, um, you know, things, nothing that any regular doctor would worry about. The functional medicine doctor looked at it and said, this is alarming. Um, this is alarming. He goes, I have, he was like, I'm actually really surprised to see this because of your age and because you're so active and you know, all these things, you're not obese. And, and he was like, I'm just really surprised to see this, but I had a lot of inflammation. So he goes, the, the report, I mean, the report is like 20 pages. And like I said, we'll read you for filth. I was lacking in, um, I was malnourished. I mean, the report literally said malnutrition. Like I was a malnourished person. I was lacking zinc. I was lacking vitamin D, I was lacking vitamin C, I was lacking magnesium, I was even lacking protein. Like I am a meat eater, I supplement vitamin D, vitamin C, magnesium, and zinc, um, and some other things that I was lacking as well. And I was explaining to him, I was like, but I supplement all of these things, and he was like, you're not absorbing it. So what he found, you know, through looking at all my blood work is that I had just high levels of infl inflammation in my digestive system, but I never knew, like I didn't feel inflamed. I didn't have, you know, like major, you know, stomach issues. I mean, sometimes like we all, okay. What I thought was sometimes we all get a little hyper. Sometimes we all get a little diarrhea. Sometimes we all get a little bit of something. Apparently that is not normal. Um, at least not how frequently I was getting, but it wasn't like affecting my life or anything. I was never in pain. So I never imagined that it was something that I needed to take care of. Um, because yeah, I, I just, I, I would watch what I ate. Like, so what I said, I didn't eat a lot of gluten and I didn't let out grains. It's because when I did, I would get diarrhea. So, um, I tried to limit that. I mean, I would eat pizza. I was eat, having dairy every day in my coffee because I was, I have cream in my coffee. So there were like certain things that were just causing more inflammation than I needed. Um, and so, yeah, so he was like, you are inflamed and you're not absorbing any of the nutrients because I eat pretty well. And even when I would tell people like that, I was malnourished or like, what? You're like one of the healthiest people, like healthiest eaters that I know. Um, and I would indulge from time to time. But in terms of like, you know, my, my regular diet consisted of salad and meat, uh, you know, and fruit. Uh, so the only thing is I, is I would have dairy every day. So anyway, um, so I had to go on this strict gut healing diet to heal my leaky gut and to, you know, help my microbiome in my stomach. And I thought I was going to be miserable doing it, but I was not, um, basically had to eliminate completely, uh, any grain and gluten, which was fine for me. Cause I don't eat a ton of that. I had to eliminate coffee. That was probably the hardest thing is eliminating coffee and eliminating dairy. Um, and I don't have a ton of dairy. I can eliminate dairy, but it's the coffee thing. That was the biggest thing. Cause I would put the, co the cream in the coffee. So I had to eliminate that. And then I had to eliminate salad. Like I actually wasn't allowed to have salad. I ate raw vegetables and salad pretty much daily, raw carrots, raw peppers, raw, you know, like I would eat them pretty much daily. And apparently, you know, it's, it was too much for my inflammation. So I had to eliminate salad out of my diet and I had to eat every, like I had to eat more than what I was eating regularly. I had to eat like five or six times a day and I had to eat meat. Like I had to eat protein specific, but I couldn't have beans. Um, I couldn't have any legumes for a period of time and I couldn't have, uh, tomatoes at, like nightshades. So no mushrooms, no tomatoes, no eggplant, um, and no legumes, like nothing with seeds because that apparently is a trigger, who knows? So I delimited all that. So basically all I was eating was uh, meat, vegetable, and fruit. And there were certain fruits, so I couldn't have every fruit. I could have apples, oranges, like citrus fruits. I could have berries. I could have peaches. I could have pears. 
Um, I could have cherries and grapes, but I couldn't have like melon or pineapple or mangoes, like things that had, um, were well known for allergens or high sugar content fruits. Um, so I couldn't have that, but I could have fruit and I was allowed to have that. So uh, I thought I'd be miserable, but I was not. Uh, and I did that for, you know, the first three weeks and I was on like a ton of supplements. So he gave me like literally a 12, 15 supplements a day I was having to take and I was having to take them twice a day, sometimes three times a day, um, to just get, you know, everything back in my system. So all the things that I was lacking, I had to supplement with that. Um, and then I was taking turmeric, you know, for just to reduce inflammation, resveratrol to reduce inflammation. So for three weeks I did that and then switched over. I could start to put back in um, mushrooms and beans. And then there was one week where I had to go completely vegan. So I couldn't have any meat, but I could have beans. So then, you know, I had a protein source. And so chickpea pasta, uh, mung bean pasta, lentil pasta was like my lifesaver then. And I actually really love it. Even to this day, I really love it. This was very recently, but um, vegan for a week. And then I could kind of go back into my diet. Now, what I'm doing right now is I'm waiting for my food sensitivities test because my doctor doesn't believe in like a complete elimination diet. He's not like eliminate everything out of your diet and never bring it back in. So I took the food sensitivities test so that I can see what I actually am sensitive to or what I'm allergic to, if anything, that's causing the inflammation. And then he said we would gradually bring things back into my diet. Uh, but you know, it was scary when it happened. It was probably more scary for my friends seeing me pass out than it was for me because I don't remember a thing. I just remember being dizzy and then waking up. Uh, but that is the story time of how my doctor told me that I was malnourished and I've had such a great time uh, kind of healing myself. It, it was the perfect time to do it during coronavirus because it's not like I'm going to a lot of parties anyway. I did go to New Orleans and even when I was in New Orleans, I cooked my own food uh, for the most part um, and haven't really, I'm trying to think, I haven't really cheated on my diet. Um, you know, I, I pretty much eat the same things <laughs> that I normally was eating prior to. I'm just not eating uh, any, I'm not indulging in any gluten food and I'm not having any dairy. Um, it, for several weeks, I thought I couldn't have any caffeine, but then he was like, oh no, no, you can have green tea and herbal tea. So I was like, oh, praise the good Lord, because I need just a little bit of caffeine. It just makes me feel so much better. So I could have green tea and I just put um, almond milk or coconut milk in that. And it's fantastic. I, I drink it every morning. Um, but yeah, that is the story of me being malnourished and my journey back to health. I'm still in process. Now I will say I lost weight the, the t when I was, sorry, I cannot talk. I lost weight as I was, um, you know, going through this. It's funny cause I eat more. Um, I eat more now and I am losing weight and I'm also exercising less and still losing weight. I think my body is just going back to its set point that I didn't realize was a set point. Um, you know, cause I used to work out a lot, like six days a week. I was faithful to working out because I did find it was hard for me to lose weight. Um, or, you know, like I felt like I, I maintained, I stayed in a certain place, but it was hard for me to lose anything. Uh, even when I was working out so hard, even when I was, you know, really watching my diet, I felt like I would lose like, you know, two or three pounds and that's it. Uh, and couldn't, you know, get beyond that. And now it's because my body was just holding on to fat. Like my body was holding on to fat as a nutrient to feed itself because, um, I wasn't absorbing the nutrients that I was eating through food. So now that I'm absorbing nutrients that I'm eating through food, my body can now release the things that it no longer needs. And I've lost like 15 pounds, um, pretty effortlessly. It, it was actually a shock. I was like shocked that I lost 15 pounds. Uh, cause I didn't even know that I, it all happened. Like, I feel like it happened in like a week or two. Like it just one day, like the first three weeks, I probably lost like a pound or two. And then like, Four weeks in, like after my, my biome, like my microbiome really kind of settled itself, like everything just started to go away. And like I tell you, I work out like four days a week and I work out maybe 20 minutes. Like sometimes I'm like mm, 12 minutes. That's a good workout, right? Um, so I work out much less. I eat so much more and my body is responding very well. So I'm super thankful that my body knows how to respond to these things and that it's getting back to whatever set point it's supposed to get to. So that's really good. So anyway, that is the story of me being malnourished <laughs> and my, um, my doctor telling me that I was malnourished, but everything is good now. Just waiting for those test results. All that to say, ladies and gentlemen, take care of your bodies. Cause one of the things that I, I definitely have always been an advocate of, but have moved into 
it more so is that you know you deserve to experience the highest level of health and wellness that you possibly can in this life uh, and that means going to the doctor regularly when something's wrong figuring out what's wrong and not being afraid to confront it taking care of your health is a part of self-care in my opinion i mean it's a huge part of self-care when you are not healthy it's very difficult to like live your best life right like it is the f foundational piece of maslow's hierarchy of needs you actually need to be healthy to move forward your health is your wealth so remember that thank you so much for watching today's video and i will talk to you soon ow <laughs>